and we're live. Welcome everybody to our second webinar on uh, the sales revolution. Um, today we have an amazing lineup of guests. So Angelie, Tabo and Matt, I'll give you guys a chance to introduce yourselves um, to everybody in a second, but super excited to have um, three thought leaders in the space join us today for our second webinar. Um, quite proud that we managed to attract such a good, a good group of people actually. Uh, so today, um, while, while we're getting ready, waiting for people to join the session, um, it'd be amazing if everybody in the audience would uh, introduce themselves and tell us where you're joining in from. Uh, we have people here from Berlin, three of us are from Berlin, and Matt's over in Seattle, so curious to see um, what the split is from Europe and US that's joined us today. Um, so I'd love to hear where you're from, your name, your role. Um, we'll launch a poll shortly um, so we can get everyone going with a nice, simple poll. Um, and of course, as we're going through the session, please feel free to ask any questions. Um, you can drop them in the chat. Um, I'll try to pick them up as we go, but I'm also not that good at multitasking. So if I miss any, any good ones, then I'll also make time for them at the end. Um, so see a few people are in there now. We've got people from Berlin, we've got to Portugal, Lisbon, Stockholm, Texas, Michigan, Hawaii, that's nice. Liverpool, Texas, good mix of people. Uh, very uh, yeah, international group that we've got with us today. Um, great, so maybe Nazar, do you want to drop the poll in as we, um, we can get everyone, the poll to get everyone going? And then um, I'll hand over to the guests to introduce themselves. Uh, maybe while we're waiting for that to pop up. Angelie, would you like to start? Mm -hmm. Uh, sure, absolutely. So I'm Anjali. Nice to meet everyone who's on the line. I am from Berlin here, but actually originally hail from the United States. Um, most recently, CMO and CGO at Latana, leading commercial B2B Martech sales. Before that, Amazon, Intuit, GoDaddy between the United States, uh, Europe, and Australia. So nice to be here. Good to have you. Uh... And Thibaut, would you like sure. to Sure. Yeah, thanks for having me, Bowen. So my name is Thibaut Suiris. I used to live in Berlin until not long ago, but now I live in south of France, so uh, close mm -hmm. to Montpellier. And basically what I do is I train and coach mostly Texas people to start more conversations. And lately I've been documenting and researching about AI and specifically chat GPT and use case for prospecting. So that's what I share every day. And uh, I guess that's one of the reasons I've been invited here. So thanks for having me. Thanks for joining. And Matt, would you like to finish this off? Sure. Thanks, Bowen. My name is Matt Millen. Good day, everybody, depending on where you are. Uh, quick, quick story. I've been selling since 1987. And if you're keeping score, that's before email, that's before the internet. And I've seen technology come into the sales tech stack over the years. And you start to see the problems technology solves. And you actually start to see the problems technology creates. When I was leading revenue at Outreach from five to 50 million, I started seeing for the first time that content was becoming a problem for the modern sales team. And this had never happened before. Uh, and there's two big challenges today that we solve through AI. Uh, the first problem is driving more engagement off your sequenced and cadenced activity. And then second, how do you not lose the personalization in the process? Uh, so that, those are things I'm super passionate about solving. Great to be with you all today. Cool. Thanks for everyone introducing. Maybe, Matt, the first thing you said got my attention that you've been in sales since 1987, so that's two years before I was born. Um, I'm curious, maybe just as a quick like ad hoc question off the bat, is, um, you know, I think there's a big hype around AI at the moment, um, and you've probably been in the game for long enough to see a few different trends that have come in. I'm curious to get your perspective on, like, um, you know, how does this the AI hype hype feel at the moment? Do you think it's another, another fad? Have you seen... Um, hype like this before, or do you think there's something unique about what we're seeing, um, especially over the last six to 12 months? Yeah, we were doing AI before AI was cool. So we've been doing it for a couple of years now. We started doing AI before it could string a whole sentence together. <clears throat> uh, it's here to stay, so it's certainly not a fad. And we'll spend some time today talking about smart ways to integrate that into our workflow to enhance productivity, use it in a great way. Uh, but I would say, you know, seeing, I, I literally was selling when PCs were first being introduced. I've seen the mobile phone revolution, uh, the internet revolution. And this is not only the biggest, but the fastest moving technology infusion that I've seen in my career. 
Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I guess um, probably a big one would have been the move to the cloud. I guess you were, you were, you were there for that as well. But uh, yeah, interesting to hear that the speed of, the speed that's happened is the thing that I think is catching everyone by surprise. Um, great. Well, look at the poll. So we, we put our first poll out. Um, so has AI changed the generation process in the last six months? Uh, about 38% said yes. Surprisingly, second, quite a lot of people don't know. Um, so curious to understand uh, where that's going from. Um, but uh, yeah, great to see that quite a few people are already using it um, and already seeing changes in their, in their stack. Um, so uh, with that, let's jump into the first question that we're going to discuss today. Um, so what, everyone can see the slides here. So how can AI be used for the prospecting and lead generation process? What are the key benefits and challenges? And maybe actually your point, Matt, is a good one. Um, for the point of this conversation, I'd like to focus more on like uh, uh, the, the LLMs, like the um, uh, generative AI that's really sort of been coming out in the last six months because it's true. AI is not a new thing. Um, many companies have been using it for the last few years. But I think, you know, the change that we've seen over the last six months um, has been quite big. And I'd like to focus the discussion more here. Um, so who would like to lead us off on, on this first question? I can start. Um, I wanted to give also a marketing perspective. I know there's probably a lot of sales leaders who are listening in, but lead generation is really a balance between marketing and sales together. We've seen a lot coming from AI. I mean, ChatGPT has you know, been everywhere and people in the content community have been talking to me, is this gonna take over my job? What does it mean for the content that's going on the website, for email, You know, these types of lead generations? And then also, I would say the partnering between marketing and sales on sequencing. So outbound outreach, how you put people back in through a, you know, a CRM system. So this has been one of the things also from the design community and that can cross between marketing and sales as well. You know, you have tools like Midjourney, et cetera, creating things. Um, you've even seen Google, for example, taking, you know, dynamic indexing from websites where performance marketers are saying, hey, do we even need to do anything anymore? Google's kind of collapsing everything. So it, it's speeding up the way that lead generation is being done, and it's also making it more automated. I think the question is the efficiency and the targeting, the personalization, which I'm sure we'll talk about um, later into the talk. But uh, yeah, lots of changes. And Angela, something I want to get your perspective on, maybe we can do it already, but uh, where do you see the biggest changes between um, in marketing and sales? Like I think in your role, you've worked in, in both, you've had good visibility into both. Um, my impression is that marketing has always probably been operating a little bit ahead of sales. Um, in terms of the you know the amount of changes and the changes in the tool stack we saw over the last ten years, marketing kind of drove it and sales caught up. Um, but yeah, what's your perspective here? Like, do you think the changes are going to be bigger in marketing and sales? Do you see the adoption? Do you see it moving faster in one segment or the other? I think it really depends on who you're prospecting. If you're prospecting enterprise, I think that there's still going to be a very heavy sales play. Of course, AI is going to be impactful, and I'll probably let you know, Matt, take that one, but it's going to be extremely impactful as far as outbound prospecting. But as far as inbound, especially with SMB and midsize, I think you're going to see marketing capabilities just completely skyrocket. The essence of personalization and the mix of AI and what I talked about, creating copy, creating designs, and then personalizing it. So this mix of AI and generative AI, and also uh, even with the cookie-less future, like how do you get you know, the particular prospects and get them into the funnel. So you're going to see marketing take off for the SMB and mid-market space, but I think you're going to see sales get a lot stronger and more capable um, in the enterprise and particularly in the outbound prospecting. Cool. Matt, Tabo, do you have anything to add to that? <clears throat> sure, I can jump in. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I can give a very specific use case here to complement what we just heard. So for reps that are personalizing, there's a very common workflow called the three by three workflow. And the premise is the rep would go out and find three points of relevant personalization and then use an email and compose that in an email under three minutes. Well, the challenge is that can take 12 to 20 minutes to do because typically you're gonna go look at someone's LinkedIn profile, you go to the company website, you're gonna go Google News, and then depending specifically, you might read a 10K, so there's a lot of information that you need to do, and it just doesn't take three minutes. So one of the things that we've been able to do utilizing AI with our own models, as well as some good workflow integration, 
is to automate that process down to seconds. So as an example, we can serve up for the sales rep all of that information at the prospect level. They can either decide to choose or, or the product can choose for them the three points of personalization. And then in seconds, it'll write three personalized emails at the prospect level. So what we're essentially able to do with AI <clears throat> is to take a process that would literally take 12 to 20 minutes and bring that down to under one minute in a great way. And I think that's the power of smartly using AI in the sales workflow as we think about it. And back to Angelie's point, like as we're all prospecting, the ability to personalize communication is important because we know from research that your open rate goes up on average about 10 points if you're personalizing the communication. And I would just say like one of the fallacies is a lot of people that I see, whether it's a cadence or a sequence, uh, step like the first email gets all the attention. They're going to over personalize the first email. <clears throat> and the challenge is the first email isn't always the email that gets open. Uh, you haven't benefited from the stacking effect yet. Um, they don't know you're prospecting. And then the rest of your emails are all typically templates. Again, AI can help. AI can help provide that same level of personalization to drive higher engagement through your activities. Great. Yeah, I mean, we see that, uh, yeah, I think at the moment in most of our cadences, they're now, our, it's our third email that has the highest open rate out of all of them. And it's definitely true that we spend most of the time personalizing the first one and then just brushing the the, the, the later emails up. Um, That's right. So yeah, super, super powerful. Um, and to Bo, maybe you can weigh in. Sure. So, I mean, uh, personally, what I've seen in, in terms of concrete use case uh, for sales are, really stuff around, you know, summarizing, brainstorming and, and personalization. So what I found is really interesting. And I think, you know, if we do that for marketing, that's also going to be very interesting is now you can actually talk to a website, talk to a PDF and ask it questions. And so, you know, you have tools for that, but basically you can copy paste, let's say a PDF, put it in chat GPT and ask it to tell you a bit more about it. And so there's some very interesting use case around it where you're able as, let's say, as a prospect to go and find information without talking to someone. And so I think that's for inbound lead, that's gonna be great. But for outbound prospecting specifically, I think it's really brilliant for, um, for example, scanning of the resume of someone on LinkedIn. So you can actually download the resume, uh, simply put the text and then ask ChatGPT to come up with some personalization elements. And so here, it's always very interesting to do it whenever you know, to like have a right prompt. So basically how you communicate with the AI, because if you ask it to write a cold email, it's going to be a terrible cold email. But if you say, hey, these are three pain points that typically help prospect with, now find personalizations element based mm -hmm. on the content I'm sharing with you and just try to help me find connections. And so for me, I think it's a really interesting use case. and It's really something I recommend learning and understanding before using the tool is really learning how you know you can use this tool to help you make this connection between the personalization i mean the, the the things you can find in the profile and the personalization i give you an example i was uh, reaching out to a prospect and she she started uh, her career as a student or private tutor for students and she was a sdr manager and so that's something you know i would have never caught before but the ai showed hey maybe you can mention that and i say hey why not? And I just send a message, say, hey, by the way, uh, have you found some similarities between managing students and managing SDRs? So I can start a conversation like that using this personalization element. And, uh, and really, for me, it's just something where I can access all this data, interview, I mean, uh, uh, ask questions to the data through the AI and then get some really good answers. And then it's about using my brain to do the connections. But uh, that's really like a concrete use case I've loved. <clears throat> I'm curious to know, like, to what extent have you um, used these like more enterprise tools? Because I know, like, I've been following this stuff online, and you're a big proponent of ChatGPT and doing, you know, giving mm -hmm. a lot of advice to individual SDRs for how they can leverage it in their work. Um, but yeah, I guess I'm just curious how much have you used the enterprise tools, and where do you see, um, you know, where do you see the the, you know, how much can you get out of ChatGPT, and when does it make sense to, to upgrade mm -hmm. to like a, a purpose built tool for this? 
So I think the you know the tools are in most cases they're connected or they're using the ChatGPT API. So they are embedding this kind of possibility or capacity in their tool. What I've seen in most cases, the tools are not really that great because they're gonna say, hey, click there and generate some emails. And you know, in a lot of cases, the you know, you're gonna have to redo the work to actually make the processation element good. So I, I think some people understand it. Uh, some people don't don't really, and so for me, I really always take the approach of trying to teach people how to learn the craft of prompt engineering, and then you know you can use that into your tools. And I give you an example. If, if for example, I was talking with someone who had an idea on using ChatGPT that was really interesting, is for example, you have a CRM, you have HubSpot or Salesforce, you can you know ask questions to your CRM. You say, okay, I got all this data about this prospect. Now I want to find personalization elements restart the conversation for example and so here you know if you have the tool but you don't really know how to interact with the ai you're going to find some very basic stuff so for me it's really learn how to work with chat gpt how it works basically and then you know use that in the tools that are offered to you so i think that's that's really where we see the the, the idea is just like you i don't know if I remember, remember the the crypto or web3 or the blockchain stuff you know, you would have like, uh, uh, you know, tools that are, you know, blockchain enabled or whatever, but that's useless. So I think for me, it's really understanding really how you do, uh, uh, how you engineer a prompt and then integrating it into your workflow. I guess if you understand the prompt engineering as well, you can, if you are using an enterprise tool in your organization, if you understand, as you said, most of the tools are using like OpenAI, ChatGPT, et cetera. If you understand how that works, then I guess you also understand the limitations, um, the strengths and weaknesses of the enterprise yeah. tools too. And for me, I see it as an infrastructure basically. So ChatGPT is basic is the infrastructure, just like I don't know the electrical network. And so understand how it works and everything, and then you can plug stuff. But basically, if you don't know how to use electricity or, or how to use that, it's not going to work. So I think that's that's the way I see it. Uh, what about you, Matt? I'm curious. Like obviously, you're building an enterprise tool in space. Yeah. Like, how do you how do you see this? Like the, you know, the the. When do you think it makes sense to use ChatGPT, and and you know what are the benefits of upgrading to an enterprise tool? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, with all respect, I have a very different view on it because I think, I think prompt engineering uh, exists when the platform you're using doesn't know what you intuitively need. <clears throat> so we think about it more about uh, taking the prompt engineering out, and three things that I think are important in addition to what Thibault said, which is number one, the, the application the reps are using should reside where the reps are working. So you don't need to go out, grab a profile, go to chat, build something in chat, then bring it back and use it. Like to me, it's a better experience when the platform you're using is where we are ultimately gonna be using the content. Uh, number two, um, the organization can predefine all the prompts on behalf of the sales rep. So we provide personalization rules, brand voice. So when you're going out to do your personalization, we already know the pain points that the company is solving. We already understand the different personas that we sell to, and we can apply all of that. <clears throat> so when the rep says generate a personalized email, there's no need for personalization prompts, and there's no need to go out to chat GPT. In fact, we don't connect to chat. We actually sit on the same backbone that chat sits on. And we've written all of our own models. And, you know, chat can do everything from write a poem to help you prospect. So it's not optimized to do either well. We just live in the sales workflow. So we integrate into your inbox. We integrate into LinkedIn. We integrate in your sales engagement platform. And we think of, like, how does the rep spend their time and how can we help them move as quickly and fluidly as possible? And, and quite frankly, um, you know, that's how you drive productivity. The other side of this is when you're going out to chat, typically the managers of the reps have no idea what's going on. And, and especially in the enterprise, you know, teams won't roll out a productivity uh, tool to the front line that managers can't manage, coach, and support. So we provide a manager dashboard and it shows all the personalization activity at the rep level. So what percent of the emails are being personalized, how much personalization is being done. And then we can take a look at the rep level, at the team level, and then based on the scoring of each email <clears throat> and the impact, we can also provide the manager like Monday morning sales meeting advice. 
like based on what your team is doing. And then at the rep level for the one-on-one, like here's some specific coaching. So I think like when you, when you start to take a look holistically, you know, chat can offer a lot of functionality, but you have to prompt engineer, you have to go there, you have to bring it back. There's not team visibility. So I think when you're talking, uh, Bowen, about enterprise uh, platforms that support this, what the platform does is it creates this holistic experience for the rep, working the way they work where they work, providing the manager the ability to coach, manage, and lead. And I think those are some of the nuances versus a horizontal application like chat versus a vertically oriented solution, you know, very focused at doing one thing great. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, maybe now is a good time to actually drop in the second poll. Um, so the second question we we're going to ask was um, around, oh, actually, um, maybe the third one, Nazar, if you're in the background there. We have a question around how effective the tools are, so I'd be curious to get people's opinion on that. Um, and I also um, wanted to give, yeah, thanks. Um, so I think there was 38 or so people had, 38% of people had been um, using AI in the last six months, so I'd be curious to see how happy you are with the tools you're using. And I also wanted to um, give um, Patrick the opportunity to share his question. So thanks, Patrick, for writing in the chat. Um, he's just asked a question, can you provide insights on the approach to automating the workflow for lead gen for, by AI? Um, so, uh, yeah, who would like to take, take this question? So automating the workflow for lead gen. Well, I, I can start and then folks can pile on. <clears throat> so one, one of the things um, that we've thought through to support this, are, are, I'll give you two dimensions. One is we integrate with your Salesforce environment. And one of the things that we report on <clears throat> is based on the prospects that are turning into meetings and opportunities, is you can build out your personas on our platform. Do you have all your personas built out? And this shows up in other ways on the personalization and in other areas. But one, we'll make sure that the organization is focusing on the, the personas that actually lead to meetings and opportunities. The second thing we'll do at the sequence or cadence level when you upload your prospects against that sequence or cadence, we'll then match that against all of the personas and give you a persona coverage report. So you could say, hey, 32% of all the leads that we just uploaded to this cadence actually aren't our primary um, ideal customer profile. And then you can adjust that lead list before you run the cadence. So these are all ways to ensure at the very top of your funnel that everything you're doing is intentional, deliberate, and matched to optimal results lower through the funnel. And really protecting the rep's time and activity against your highest value targets. Thanks. And um, Tabo, Angela, anything you wanna to add to this? I can add on a little bit to that. So, I mean, at the very top of the funnel, coming from digital, what we can do is just pump out a sheer amount of content so using chat GPT, and I would say it's very effective for product marketing and where product marketing things get wrong, you can just continuously pump out A-B test, et cetera. And then as you're working with your sales team, the sales team says, look, I need this particular target within the ICP, whether it's industry, particular sizes, and then you can really test out the content. So an AI tool like chat GPT, you can write it faster, test it faster versus having more humans. So I know maybe the content community might feel a little bit uncomfortable about that, but at the same time, you can just do so much more, which will give insights back into the sales team, all starting from top of funnel, getting your leads through, and that continuous feedback cycle. So that's what I've seen it used for, just sheer volume of content, um, also for product marketing, which still seems to be with early scale-ups trying to find the product market fit, not really so much for enterprise. Um, you know, they're a little bit more mature, um, what I would say that a tool like ChatGPT is not yet good at doing is being super, super creative, thinking of a strategy or a strategic approach. If you say, write particular words about this particular product, they'll give you the words, but it hasn't gotten to that yet. But I think um, Elon Musk just passed. I don't know what the news was lately with the chip and the brain and the, so, you know, if he has his way, it might get there at some point. Great. But yeah, it's also good to think about it from the, the inbound perspective. I guess we've been very focused on the outbound. 
um, you know, we're definitely using it to write, write blogs. Are, are you guys also using it to help you with your writing and, and generating content for your, your companies? Um, okay, cool. So just looking at the poll results, so how effective the AI tools are using for generating pipeline, only 13% said very effective. So maybe less than expected, um, but I know there was also only a small proportion of people who are using them. Um, for those who said it was very effective, I'd be curious to know what tools you're using. If you could drop in the chat, um, I think the audience would like to hear like which tools you've, you've had a lot of success with would be, be super interesting to hear. Um, and maybe on this question, before we move on to the next question, um, there's one part that I don't think we haven't we've touched on is just what are the key challenges of using AI um, for, for prospecting lead gen. So I'd be curious um, if anyone would like to share um, some of the key challenges that had uh, with, with this process. So I mean, I can I can talk about some some challenges that I've seen. Again, um, I think whenever you are, you know, using tools. So one thing you know that I've seen is that the reply rates and meeting rates are like going down like crazy. So it's super hard to book meetings nowadays. SDRs, I don't know if it's still the case, but at least in the last few months, were fired like in thousands. And the reason, I mean, there's many reasons, but basically. People don't really uh, have forgot. They simply have forgotten how to start conversations with humans. So uh, you know, it's like uh, I don't know if you have seen kids uh, playing with their phones and their social skills, basically, but they they are really low because they just don't know how to talk in real life with human beings. And so I think that's why I actually have a business and I'm, I'm able to to you know to work is because I train people to use human psychology to start conversations very simply. And uh, and so what I see is that. Whenever you're using ChatGPT, you have this, and we can see it, Patrick, with your question. First question is, how can I automate everything and do nothing, basically? Or, you know, I'm exaggerating, but basically, how can I automate? And for me, I think it's the same problem as we've seen with, like, LinkedIn automation and all these kind of things, is that we tend to automate or to say, okay, I'm going to put a tool, and then my team will suddenly be amazing. And so I found that in a lot of cases, it's not the case because people don't understand how to start a conversation with a stranger and how to turn that into a meeting. And so the real challenge I see is really first understanding the basics and you know asking ChatGPT, okay, now you know, write me an email, that's gonna be amazing, or using this tool, and then you see the results are not that great because you you didn't really you know use a framework or like a, a message framework to start a conversation. So I think that's a big challenge I see is people just rely too much and they think they can, you know completely outsource their job, the creative part of it and the human part of it is really important. I can add on to that just a little yeah, bit. Then, definitely, uh, okay. From a demand gen side, what we've seen is actually handwritten letters yeah. become so supremely valuable because, you know, like we were talking about just the sheer volume, whether it's inbound, outbound prospecting, people are just getting overloaded with all of the automation. And although from, you know, a sales perspective side, yes, you want everything to be automated and everybody's tracking their KPIs. We want those open rates to increase. If you're on the other end, if you're the actually ICP profile and you get this handwritten letter, it is amazing. And just the, the sheer responses. So I feel like it's, you know, five steps forward and 10 steps back. And we're kind of going back and forth. But I mean, to everyone who's, you know, listening, you cannot underestimate the value of, you know, a physical, you know, piece of paper, a physical book. It, it's amazing how much, yeah, okay, we're getting the emojis now. It's amazing how much, uh, you know, people appreciate that now. How long do you think it is before they invent robots that can write handwritten letters for you? <laughs> That'll be the yes. next thing. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, I think it's, it's interesting that, yeah, the more, the more automation there is, uh, you know, I, I also felt that recently that um, something Mathalda, one of uh, my colleagues that she often runs our webinars, she was really big last year on, on um, writing creative processes in SDR work and, and writing poems and, and creative work. The funny thing is that and it felt like she was one of the few people that was doing it last year, but now everybody's writing poems on LinkedIn and I just you just don't believe it anymore. Like maybe they're doing it themselves, but suddenly it feels... Um, you know, it, it loses credibility and uh, because everyone can do it now so easily. So going back to things that, you know, you can't automate the face of the high value. Um, <laughs> sorry, Felda, I see you there. Um, 
Maybe one last question before we move on here uh, is something we haven't discussed at all is around the um, prioritization of leads. So I guess we've talked about how we can use, talked a lot about automation and generating leads, but what about the um, prioritization of the leads that are, that are coming in? Um, is there any way to use AI here to make sure that you're spending time with the right, the right people? Um, so maybe touching on this more like quality, quality over quantity approach. I mean, I can start. I can say that what tools like ChatGPT have done for us has given us the ability to create massive volumes. It hasn't done a lot on the personalization side. That's still something that within the organization, there's other tools for that, of course. With the cookie list future happening, I think, especially in Europe, it's going to be interesting to see how we do that. But it, it is a serious challenge. There's a difference between a flood of leads and just sheer volume and having tools like ChatGPT run tons of copy and you get a lot of things inbound in your sales team. It's the classic thing. Marketing says, oh, we got a lot of leads. Sales team says, oh, they're not great. And then you have that back and forth. I, I'm not clear that the AI tools in existence right now are solving that. There's, there's a difference between an AI tool and a personalization and targeting tool. And I think that we need to just be clear of the difference. Um, it will get better over time because I think everything's going more and more <clears throat> digital. So personalization will get better over time at the expense of privacy, maybe another webinar, but uh, either way, uh, there's a difference between uh, personalization and sheer volume. Yeah, I think another dimension on this, in addition to leads, is also the signals we're getting on those leads. So one of the things that we're working on right now is a much more dynamic experience. Like if we think about sequences and cadences today, it's usually a bunch of pre-map touch points, regardless of the prospect, regardless of any signals that we're getting from some third-party apps, like a Sixth Sense as an example. So we're, we're working on like, how do we use the AI to understand who's raising their hand? And then what do we know about them? Like, what have they been interested in the past? Have they downloaded any of our content? Have we interacted before? Have we talked before, but it wasn't the right time? And then based on the lead and the signal, what is the right thing for the rep to do to really serve that up as the appropriate task? And it's not always... Uh, the same task or the same series of tasks. And I think in addition to your leads, like thinking about the signals associated with it and then understanding how that's prioritized within your organization for appropriate action and follow-up. Mm. That's a good example. Maybe, Matt, the, so I think this um, sounds pretty awesome, but, but what's um, what's changed in the last six months with, that's made this pop? Like, what is it about, what has changed in the last, because I think everyone's been sort of wanting to try and do this. I think a lot of companies have been trying to crack this like intent question and, and tying it back to, to outreach. What's, is there something that's possible now that wasn't possible 12 months ago that makes this, um, that makes you know, us getting closer to this? Yeah, I think everything's changed in six months. If you did this webinar eight months ago, like Tebow would have had a completely different talk track. Um, I would have had a completely different talk track and, like, like everything's changed and what you're seeing happening, uh, you're seeing organizations that have products, services, and solutions trying to figure out how to incorporate AI to enhance uh, features, ability, benefit to their customer. You're looking at sales teams, revenue teams, marketing teams, uh, other teams, you know, looking to how do I best leverage this? So really there's like this race going on in terms of everybody understanding how to either deliver or extract value from this layer. Like that's at a high level, that's what's going on. There's how do I create value? Then how do I derive value by leveraging uh, AI? And you, it's obvious, like some companies, it looks like they're just bolting it onto the side uh, so they can say they do it. And then other organizations are very thoughtfully, you know, thinking through and creating a really great experience, um, you know, for their customer. So it's just something to watch. But what this has done, it's enabled disparate systems to work in more uniform. It's allowed teams to garner more effectively insights into what's going on, make better decisions, what to do with that information. And then to the extent organizations are comfortable, like how much human involvement, uh, to Tebow's point earlier, which is excellent. Like in some cases, you want to fully automate some of these workflows because there's just lower need for a human to be involved. And then there's others you absolutely want to 
you know, keep, keep somebody involved. Like, you know, you don't want a robot making the phone call as an example. And then you can decide in these other touch points, you know, how much human involvement do you want in concert with the AI? Personally, I believe you're seeing two kinds of AI companies starting right now. <clears throat> you see companies that are building products and solutions to replace people. And you're seeing companies like mine that are building products to help people move faster, better, and be more efficient and effective. So I just think as you're looking at these products, like which, which one fits into your organizational culture, and then how much do you embed that into your rep's workflow? Okay. Um, you talked about some companies that are kind of just, uh, you know, sticking AI into their products, uh, you know, as a sidebar, and sometimes it feels more like people feel like they have to do something, maybe without maybe thinking it through completely. Um, you know, what's your feeling, Matt, in terms of, you know, what impact do you think this is going to have on the enterprise software market over the next 12 months? Like, do you think that this is something that is going to disrupt a lot of the existing tools or, or is it something that's going to, you know, or is it the larger organizations are going to have the opportunity to make their tools better? Um, I mean, of course, there's going to be cases of both, but do you think that this is like disruptive or sustaining for a lot of the, the bigger like enterprise sales and marketing tech companies out there? Yeah, I think it's a great question and there's multiple like dimensions which to answer, like but it's absolutely disruptive. Your larger, more legacy customers, you know, will move much more slowly in the ability to integrate this into their legacy platforms. And then on the other end of the scale, you have these brand new uh, or companies that are being formed on the back of ChatGPT, you know, providing like a veneer of interface. Um, and all of a sudden, it, it, they're in the market. And then everything in between. So I think you'll see a few things as a result of this. Number one, you'll see some compression and consolidation in the tech stack. So you'd see some of them, um, some players get more robust, offer more features, be more complete. So sales teams have less products to buy, to administer, train. Uh, and then on the other side, you're gonna see some very specialized and nuanced applications that can deliver some very deep functionality in areas. And so you'll get this bifurcation. I think anybody in the middle will get lost uh, because you know you either need some very deep expertise, or you're looking to consolidate, you know, some broad capability into a platform. Okay, um, I've been talking about changing slides for a while now, so maybe I should finally do it. But I, I think this is a, a broad question that's captured most topics. So I think I've only got three more, and we can skip over them um, as well. So the, the second one is about real life examples. I think everybody has already shared some um, some examples, but um, did anyone have a, another example around? Um, you know, companies have used, used AI um, successfully in a way that wasn't possible um, 12 months ago. Is there any examples that you had that come to mind that you haven't already shared? Yeah, so, um, yeah. go ahead, Angelique. Yeah. No, 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 go ahead. Okay. Um, for me, it's really about, um, so you think about design tools, nothing so much related about sales, but um, you have some super powerful background removers that were kind of not that great before, and now they're amazing, and you can replace the background. I know Adobe, I think Photoshop, they've done a bunch of things like that, but there's some really great capacities there, um, capabilities, sorry. And so I think, you know, that was a really concrete example for me where I was like, okay, this, this is really brilliant. And um, one thing that, you know, I, I always, that's a use case I always like to share is basically Whenever you have a marketing team, you're lucky to work with a marketing team. They are generating tons of content all the time. And you know, often it's maybe optimized for SEO. So you have long, boring blog posts that are valuable, but most of the keywords are for SEO purpose. So you can take these, remove all the keywords and turn it into a playbook. And you know, something let's say about remote.com trying to do some, um, you know, a, a blog post about global employment. And it's super long, super like full of keywords. You can turn it into a three-step playbook on how to employ uh, people globally. And then you can pitch that or tease that in your, in your outreach sequence. And this is really something that was very hard to do because it was very time consuming before, but now you can do it in five minutes. So I think that's, that's some examples of a, you know, use case that worked really well. Great. And Angela, you wanted to jump in there as well? 
I would also say uh, video marketing and also video prospecting. So whether you're on LinkedIn or using a different tool and you have video prospecting, there's a lot of tools out there that will do it. Now, the tools I've seen that are AI generated, I would say so-so. I don't know how up to speed all of them are, but I would say that it's getting there. Um, anything that you can do personal is there is great. And then also just video marketing. I don't know if you guys have seen, I'm sure you have, I call them all the chintzy product marketing videos. That's basically problem, we're your solution, buy us now. And they all have that ridiculous background music and they're thrown out there. So AI now is getting a lot better. You can put better videos together, faster, cleaner, and really work with marketing and sales together to make sure they're targeting it right ICPs and you know they have the right messaging and right content. So there are a lot of things that are getting better. And I think from marketing and sales, it's kind of all converging you know, into one big thing. So it'll be exciting, I think, if we talk again in the next six months to see, yeah, what happens next. Hmm. What, what, what software was it that you can create these product videos? I'm curious, uh, I'd like to check it out. Um, there's a couple, so Synthesia is one. So there's a couple and you can basically upload yourself talking and then it will, yeah, talk from there and you can, you know, insert things, but there's a lot of different things, even if you look at something as simplistic as Canva, which is, not AI, but you can take a tool like that and really just put things together now where you don't need a developer and a designer and a copywriter to put everything together and a videographer, you can just do it yourself. So whether it's an AI tool or I would just say a regular tool, a lot of these things are starting to converge together. Yep. And Matt, anything you'd like to add here? Yeah, I, th <clears throat> I think what's, um... You know, most most practical for me is research. You know, a lot lot of people are doing research before preparing before meetings, um, and now it's possible. Like if I was jumping on a meeting, you know, I can get communication advice for everybody that's going to attend the meeting. So AI will go out, read the LinkedIn profile, and come back with communication advice on the best way to speak to somebody, communication do's and don'ts. Uh, if you're trained on personality profile, you get that as well. And I think, you know, talk about the human element. Well, there's nothing more human than the phone call. And oftentimes you get one shot to make that call and to be best prepared in terms of how that individual likes to be communicated with uh, and speak that way, much higher likelihood that you'll create rapport earlier in that conversation and let that continue through. Cool. Can you, can you suggest some tools here? Yeah, well, we do that. Um, so we'll, we'll serve that up at the prospect level. Um, and, and there's some others out there as well, uh, but we think, we think supporting back, back to people, supporting the human interaction is critical and it shows up whether it's on LinkedIn, whether it's over the phone, uh, a video, a video script, you know, any of the email touches, like understanding how humans connect with humans and, and then leveraging technology to make that as fluid as possible. Maybe I should have uh, should have profiled you guys before I started this webinar. <laughs> I remember it for the next the next group. Um, uh, I see Saeed's got a question in the the chat. Um, he's asking about uh, what level of the marketing funnel is AI most helpful. So I think we've touched on um, sort of inbound awareness. Um, we've talked about you know personalized outreach. We've talked about identifying the quality of the leads. Like if you got if you had to choose one. Um, one stage, what do you think, where do you think it's going to have the biggest impact? And I was just typing the answer, but uh, top of funnel. So top of funnel lead generation, I think is going to have the biggest impact with AI, just because the sheer amount of what you can do. Um, certainly down the funnel, kind of mid-stage, mid-funnel product marketing, you know, pulling leads that have already been scored, for example, through the system and working with sales, it'll have some there, but I think the biggest, most drastic impact is going to be top of funnel. It'll be interesting to see, which is why a lot of performance marketers, I think, are a little unhinged at the moment because I think AI is going to start to take over a lot of that. Content marketers, it depends. So it really depends on the type of content you're writing. I think there's going to be a lot of opportunity for very skilled content marketers that are writing maybe more deep technical <clears throat> topics or strategic topics, but just your average kind of go out there and drag them in top of funnel. I think AI is going to take over a lot of that. To Bo, Matt, what do you think? Well, I, I would echo what we just heard. Uh, I think 
content marketing has absolutely been disrupted by AI. And, you know, a lot of organizations would outsource content market, uh, content development to contractors and then they just don't have time in house to do that. And products, AI products have allowed that now to come in house. And uh, the second thing that AI does, it, it absolutely kills writer's block. Like one of the hardest things to do is to initiate the content because productivity is the killer of creativity. And people are just really busy. And now I've got to sit down and thoughtfully craft some, some content. And you can just tell whichever product you're using, just this is what I want to do. And it's going to get you 60, 70, 80% of the way there. And then you can go ahead and make it your own. So I think that's been super disruptive. I think the other place that we can start to see some like really beneficial disruption as well is if you think about marketing compared to sales, marketing has always been, oh, one to many messaging. And then once it's a, a hand raiser, then it's one to one messaging at, at the sales level. And I think with AI and the ability to create more relevant personalization, even at the one to many level, is you'll have more relevant, more contextual messaging above the line which I think benefits uh, and enhances acceleration through the top of funnel to the sales funnel. Yeah, so for me, <clears throat> I think uh, in the, the part outside of prospecting, so I think prospecting will be, is already really impacted uh, in, a, in a good way. I think it's basically whenever you are, you, you know, you are capturing conversations being able to summarize these conversations, get the key points, and then maybe get a sentiment on the deal. So um, you can kind of, I know, I, I don't know exactly, but I think Gong or, you know, they, they kind of help with these kind of things, but they were already using AI before, but now it's it's like accessible to almost everyone. So really summarizing what has been said, because, you know, in conversations, in sales, you sometimes talk to many different people and then you have to take notes and the notes are, you know, reps are notoriously bad at taking notes. So if AI can do it for them, that's going to really help. So I think something for surfacing what's interesting in the data can be really, uh, really interesting. Mm. Yeah, getting rid of the busy work is always nice. Yeah. Um, okay. I'm going to jump to the last question. Actually, we just have 10 minutes left. Um, so keen to hear your thoughts about what the future, what the future holds. So, um, uh, yeah, maybe I'd be interested to hear what you think over the next 12 months and then maybe with a broader perspective of five years. Um, and we, we have about 10 minutes left, so maybe if you could try and keep your answers, everyone can speak, but we try and keep the answers to like two or three minutes so we have time for one or two questions at the end. Um, so who would like to share their thoughts first here? I can start. So I think that we're going to get into a phase where in future AI will build entire digital ecosystems for us. It'll take prospecting, personalization, put everything together. Google is already a great example where you know paid marketers would go out there and they'd have to create advertising and target. Now it's basically just taking dynamic images from ads that are doing well and also your website and automatically putting it together and then automatically running campaigns. So you can see an entire field of marketing going out the window. And I think the next 12 months, um, you know, even further than that, you're going to see AI start to completely take over digital ecosystems. And then it's a question of kind of strategic influence, but uh, it's going to be really interesting, I think, on the digital front. And what time frame are we talking about here? When do you think you'll, you'll we'll start seeing, like, I guess I, we've already started, but when do you think you'll, you'll really feel the, the change? Next 12 to 18 months, because as these tools get better, and again, I mean, Apple just, you know, put out their AR. I mean, imagine how you, how you can see ads these days as you know, you're shopping and going through different videos. So I think in the next 12 to 18 months, AI will start to build out digital ecosystems. And then after that 18 month mark, then it's going to figure out, okay, how do you cross sell, upsell, put ads? And it's really going to be a transition, but I think we're going to start to feel the impact in the next 12 months. Okay. Thanks. Um, who would like to go next? Well, I'm happy to go. Uh, you know, I think if you think out <clears throat> point like five years, you could literally say AI could be selling to a company's AI, 
I mean, it could, it could literally be, especially for a more transactional sale. I remember back in the uh, early 2000s, like there was this online auction. And there was this fear that enterprises would just put anything they wanted to buy on auction. And then suppliers could, whoever would do the deal at the lowest price would get the deal and like all value would be depleted you know, from the relationship and it would just come down to pure price. And I think in the end, like people have to decide, you know, who they want to work with or what they want to work with. Do they want to work with somebody or do they want to work with something? And I, and I think it's a, it's a much bigger question and just in terms of the overall experience we want, you know, like a lot of companies, you know, try to push tech support or customer support to a bot then they get a lot of complaints and then they advertise that now they have real humans again. And I, and I think you can only push people so far to an automated experience before it's too much. Uh, and like I'm a Amazon business customer and I ordered something and I had a problem with the order and a bot was trying to help me. And I, it, it wasn't. And every time I went in, it didn't know this was my 19th time trying to resolve it. I'm like, I would pay twice the money just to talk to somebody to employ some common sense here. So I think that like the big, the big answer really comes down to like, what do we want our experiences to be and how far will we let the technology dictate and drive those experiences? Just flat out, like, do we still want to deal with somebody at the end of the day? Do we value the relationship? How much research am I going to do before I talk to somebody, which we're already seeing continues to escalate to the point where engagement with a human gets further and further, deeper and deeper into a sales process or a buying cycle. So I think it really is going to come down to human tolerance here in terms of like how much interaction and when we want that interaction. Now, what that's going to force to happen is that the interactions will get better. Like AI is already helping interactions get better because emails are getting personalized where they were templated before the personalization is more relevant, not just surface level. So we're seeing, we're already seeing the AI help generate better experiences, but these are largely done in combination with a human being. So one, we'll continue to see better experiences. We'll see more, more efficiency, more productivity uh, in the relationship. But at some point, it's going to come down to how much relationship do we want versus just getting something done. And I think that's going to be nuanced, um, you know, in terms of what's being bought and sold, how it's being bought and sold. So I, I don't know yet, like where we're going to be in five years, because but I believe in, in humans. Like I believe that we don't want to lose human touch. I think COVID taught us like what happens when you take that away. And I'm hoping we don't forget that as we're figuring out how to best utilize and deploy AI technology in our relevant businesses. Short term, yeah, short term, we'll certainly see um, people like bringing it in and figuring it out. I saw a great quote on LinkedIn and the quote was, you're not going to be replaced by AI, you'll be replaced by somebody using AI. So I think like the, the next step, the next obvious step is like the kind of conversation you're hearing today will become the common conversation in organizations. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think it's a great point, actually, that maybe the limits are going to be defined by the buyer. Um, I was thinking that as we were talking about, you know, more content, more automation, more, 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 more. I wonder at what point buyers are just going to switch off. <laughs> like, um, you know, if we talk about everything being able to do more, 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 cheaper, cheaper, cheaper. Um, you know, it's funny because people are just more willing to spend money. Companies are willing more to, more willing to spend money to get customers than they are to, to buy things. So I think it makes sense that it impacts sales and marketing more. But at some point, maybe people get so overwhelmed that they need AIs to help them buy and, and cut out all of this noise. And, and that might be the limiting factor of how far this goes. Um, and to Bo, we have five minutes left. So um, finish. You'd like sure. to finish up. So I think uh, within 12 months, you're going to see some people starting to uh, individually figure out how they can replace 80% of the tasks they have to do in their jobs. So um, basically, they're going to be able to deliver the same results with two hours of work per day or even less. 
and this is going to be great for these people. And next step they should take is to quit and basically work on their own because within, I think, five years, I think all the people working in sales will have to maybe learn another job or hope for governments to go and, and actually pay some money for people to just leave. Because I think this is the event that's going to move us in, outside of like sales, but in a kind of post-work society where a lot of people will actually, you know, all these people just sitting, you know, in front of a computer, everything. I think we will need to do that. So uh, that's going to be very interesting. I, I see a very bleak future, actually. Um, so I, I think, you know, if, if you're in... As you said, Matt, uh, this quote, I, 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 wrote, I, I wrote a quote similar. I don't know if it was mine or, you know, I guess a lot of people think the same. It's basically, if, if you're not using it to actually get better, improve and everything, you're going to be replaced by people who do. So uh, I, for me, I think it's just going to be very interesting, but it's going to create a lot of turmoil uh, because people will just like have no reason to come to work because something can do it better, cheaper than they, they, they are. So... That's that's what I see, and it's not you know it's it's a bit scary, let's say. It's probably probably a topic for a whole webinar on its own. But when do you you talk about a bleak future, people being automated? Um, you know what time what time horizon do you see this happening? I mean, you talk about five years can be before, but basically, I see yeah, I see it's gonna, it's going to look like not like that, but it's the matrix basically. So, is is either you use it or basically your you are your job is to pr produce data that can be harvested to sell you stuff. So I think that's that's already the case. People are on Instagram and all these things. So I think it's just understanding, you know, what you want to do uh, and, and on which side you want to be. So that's, yeah, I think five years, we'll see in five years, it's a lot of time, but I, I think there can be the timeline. Okay, four, four minutes left, maybe rather than taking questions. Matt, Angela, would you like to add on to that? How do you see this? I know, Matt, you already mentioned that you, you're building software to help salespeople. Do you think that it will? Um, do you think that do you agree with Spo that it will replace, or do you always think there'll be need for sales salespeople? But... Look, I think it's going to replace some jobs. I, I don't see it quite as bleak. You know, if you think about the assembly line today, you know, you got robots doing a lot of work. There's still people on the assembly line. I just think it's going to end up being the right mix. Uh, quite frankly, I don't see it quite as bleak. I certainly appreciate that perspective and it could be that way. Um, but I think at some point, like we're still going to want to work, work with folks. I mean, even today, like you can go to a McDonald's in an airport, they've got a, they've got these kiosks all lined up now. Like you go to a screen and place your order uh, and they, they're down to like one register. I'll wait in line for the register. Like I, I want to place an order uh, and I, and you know, I could be old school, uh, but the question is like, you know, what, you know, what interaction you're looking for? Like, are you going to go to a high end restaurant and start interfacing with a tablet or like at, like at what point do the service levels start to change? And I just think societally, like, sure, the AI could do the replacement, but like, will we tolerate that? Two minutes left, Angela, would you like to yeah, share sure. a little bit? Um, I mean, I agree. I think that it will replace task-oriented jobs. But what I think can happen, if we look at it correctly, is it can open up creative roles and the creation. I think a lot of the left side of the brain, where things are very automated, think Excel, all of this will be taken care of. And now as humans, we can create and continue and focus on kind of the creation economy and kind of the merging of the right and the left you know, side of the brain, which would be really nice. And then I also want to go back to what we touched upon earlier, you know, in this discussion, personal experiences, the handwritten letters, the handwritten notes, you know, actually meeting somebody for a coffee and doing a sales presentation. These personal experiences are going to become just top shelf, top flight, the most valuable thing. So even though some things might be bleak, I think that there's the sun is still going to shine in a couple different arenas. Great. Okay. Thanks for the final comments. So um, we'll finish up on time. Um, if you have any other questions in the crowd, please feel free to reach out to, to me or any of the other speakers. I'm sure we'd also be happy to, if you reach out to them. So um, you can see our contact details there on that last slide. And maybe as a final um, uh, call to action, uh, I'd like to invite everyone here to our next webinar next week on using AI for sales execution. So I'll be catching up with Jake Dunlap and Kevin Gaither. 
um, to talk about. Now we're doing several posts in this series, so now we're talking about pipeline. Next, we're going to be talking more about executing the playbook and how you can use AI to help people um, yeah, execute on sales calls will be the main the main topic of the of conversation. So let's see you all there. Thank you for joining and thank you to our great speakers today. So enjoy the evening, Angela Tabo and Matt, you're just getting started with your day. <laughs> so enjoy. Um, but thank you so much for joining today. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.